Hi everyone, Diogo C for Gearspace here in partnership with Sweetwater. Today I'm here to show you Studio One version 6 and in this video we'll focus on mixing. I'll show you some new features for version 6. You need to be on Studio One Professional to take advantage of everything that I'm going to show you in this video. So we'll talk about how to set up a mix, about new plugins, about routing and all the goodies that Studio One packs for mixing. All right, so let's get started with how to set up a mix in Studio One. For version six, we have a new smart template system, which is really helpful. So you go to File, New, and you have all the available options. You have options for mastering, for producing beats, for mixing, and so forth. And one nice new feature is the drop zone. You can grab your files from Finder or Windows Explorer if you're on Windows, drop them here, set up the sample rate. So Studio One will take care of everything, sample rate conversions. So let's give this a try. Okay, there you go. All your tracks in the session, each one of them with their respective color so you can start mixing. Okay, so let's close this one and go back to our previous session. Close. No, we don't need to save this one for now. Okay, so we are back to our previous sessions and you can save your own templates, of course. So if I want to use this mixer configuration, I can do that. You just go to file, save as template, and then you can add your title, subtitle, description, change the icon and so forth. We can close this one now. Okay, so first thing uh, to have in mind when mixing with Studio One is the console shaper, which is, is not quite a plugin that you can use on any DAW. It's exclusive to Studio One, uh, exclusive to Studio One Professional, I should say. And what console shaper does is it emulates a full-blown analog console within Studio One and you have everything you have drive, noise, I don't like noise, so I'm turning this off. And you have crosstalk, which is that little spill between left and right channels, between mixer channels, it emulates that too. So why I'm bringing this up before everything? Because it's quite dramatic. The, the effect pro provided by Console Shaper is quite evident and I prefer to mix into it. It's not a good thing, at least not a, a, an ideal thing, I should say, to insert console shaper after you're done with your mix. Maybe that will work, but on most occasions, in my experience at least, it does not work. You have to mix into it to take, uh, to reap the, the, the full benefits that it brings. So let's have a listen so you, you can decide for yourself about the, the sound character, I'm going to play you a small clip first with Console Shaper enabled, then I'll bypass Console Shaper and play that again. All right, so let's have a listen. Okay, I think that's quite uh, self-explanatory. You, you, you can easily notice how the, especially the mid-range in, in this console shaper. I'm, I'm saying in this console shaper because this one is the one that comes with Studio One uh, Professional. You can buy other consoles uh, from Sweetwater so you can expand your mixing color palette in a broader way with different options, different tastes. I quite like this one. I think it fit, fits uh, uh, this mix uh, in, in particular uh, uh, because uh, modern metal usually has this 
uh, scooped mid range and shiny highs and deep bottom and console shaper provides that you can of course play with the settings with the drive with the crosstalk and with the noise i don't like noise so you can add it if you want it so you really recreate that entire analog console thing console shaper is quite easy to use you just need to enable the mix effects tab on the main output on studio one you don't need to have it on every single channel or uh, bus channel. So it's similar to how Pro Tools Heat works, as opposed to plugins like Sonimo Setsons, Late Digital VCC, and so forth. So just enable the Mix Effects tab on your DAW, Console Shaper will show up and take care of the rest. All right, so let's move on to our next topic, which is pen laws. And Studio One has a different approach about pen laws. Pen laws are usually a global settings on most DAWs, but Studio One offers a bit more flexibility in that regard, since pen laws can be determined per channel, per stereo channel, I, I should say. So you go to the inserts let's type in dual pen and there you have it you have five options for for pen laws minus 3 db is the most common common one which means when you hard pen a signal totally to to the left or to the right you get minus 3 uh, db of attenuation so this is the default setting you can change that if you like this dual pen plugin is also quite useful if you need to to flip between left and right or dial in precise values it's quite flexible here speaking of panoramas uh new for version 6 is the binaural panning plugin so if you're playing with binaural audio this should be quite useful as well you can also access the binaural panning on the channel overview window i'll speak more about the channel overview window in a moment so just click on the channel editor here and you have access to balance panning the usual panning dual panning and binaural okay so moving on to our next topic let's talk about a, a bit about the mixer itself now we have a new option which can flip the faders to control the sends you just need to come in here to this little button here on the left corner and you have access to the sends on the faders so you can access send fx2 which i have right here right now or you can switch to fx1 i have them in reverse order here <laughs> because of the way i set up this mix but you get the idea this should greatly help and it's another trick upper sleeve in studio one this mixer is already super flexible and this furthers our options with it all right so next is the channel overview window which is also new for version 6 this is very similar to cubase innuendo so for those coming from those dolls they should be right at home with this you can have everything at the same window polarity flip sends q mixes inserts of course and the fader panorama everything you need to do channel work within a single window okay so speaking about channel work studio one has upgraded a few plugins most notably is the new pro eq3 and now we have a dynamic function that you can access here by clicking on the little d button here you have your threshold and you have your operating range this is quite useful this eq was already very good very effective very good sounding and this furthers our options with it another plugin that received an update was the auto filter let's grab it here which has a not only some fresh new looks but also a step sequencer as well and personas has also included a few new plugins let's check out the vocoder 
which gives us that nice synth-like effects that was present on, on, on so many hit records, especially on vocals. And we also have a new de which is quite useful as well, not only for, for voices, uh, for vocals, of course, but also for things like drum overheads or anything that has a uh, harsh top end that you need to deal with, the -er is your plugin. Okay, so that wraps it up for us. I hope this video has been useful to show you some new tricks that Studio One version six packs. And for all your Studio One needs, head over to sweetwater.com and you can purchase the latest version and also upgrade from previous versions or from lesser versions such as Studio One Artist. And you can even cross grade from other DAWs to Studio One. All right, so thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.